Yes, hello uh, loony listeners, you are listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. I am uh, your host for this evening, this is the High Priest of Conchu, Ray, and I am flying solo for this episode. It's been a, a pretty busy week at work, um, and also shed- scheduling wise it's been, um, yeah, it just hasn't been aligning for for us this week, so... You've got the Ray Ramble happening. I'm glad you've joined us. I didn't want to delay this. You know, the show must go on. Uh, very excited. I've just read it. We are covering tonight uh, the latest in Conan Serpent War, issue four. It's the finale to this four-part adventure. It's our Lunapic new comic book review. So uh, can't wait to get stuck into that. There's a lot to talk about for that. I mean, even considering that it's just just myself um, and yeah welcome welcome everyone um, before we start anything obviously I want to just reiterate that this episode is sponsored by our generous co-producers Wayne Hunt Josh Johnson and James Young and our executive producer Dustin Kurtz thank you very much guys for becoming patrons um, and for loonies out there listening that are maybe curious about it um, why not check out our Patreon page? It's uh, patreon.com slash ITK Moon Knight. There are a lot of bonuses there, a little incentives for you to, to maybe... I mean, you don't have to. I mean, we will carry on as always. But, uh, you know, if you throw a bit of coin our way, um, there are opportunities for us to expand, to do stuff, you know, always bubbling with ideas. So um, please consider joining as a Patreon member. There are nice little benefits there. Speaking of which, just a little note, uh, so Patreon members, you'll be receiving this episode one day early um, compared to the rest of the listeners out there, so um, good stuff you're listening to this if you are listening to this right now. Um, oh, it's hard to write, you know, disseminate this. <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening to this just on the Patreon feed, then you know um, that you're getting this early and exclusive to you. Uh, unfortunately, no video, so for patrons that have access to videos, um, look, you don't want to see my, my mug, it's just me, so so no videos this week, although there will be a something bubbling in the works, actually, uh, I won't, you know, divulge anything yet, but one of the loonies has approached us and he's done some remarkable work, so I can't wait to release that to show uh, to show the loonies who follow us on on YouTube in particular. Anyway, that that is coming up. Um, so that might be something that we might um, throw towards the patrons a bit earlier on uh, for them to have a little bit of a geese and a gander. But exciting stuff ahead. Anyway, on the news front, loonies, uh, look, no idle chat. I'm not going to just chat with myself. So <laughs> I'm going to go straight into the white noise of the news. Uh, and, you know, one one moment while I take a little bit of a... A little bit of conscious nectar there. All right, white noise. <laughs> this week, not much. Admittedly, I haven't really dived deep in the news this week. But there is one bit of interesting news. It is, uh, I got this from just the Marvel website, Werewolf by Night. There's a new series coming in April, which will be very exciting. It will be written by Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas and uh, and Benjamin Jackendoff. Um, so this is exciting. I'm I'm excited for it. I'm always happy for some supernatural. I've read Werewolf by Night by Doug Mensch and Mike Plug, which is pretty cool. Volume one, the two complete con- um, editions. So this new series will be fun. I I believe it's based on not Jack Russell, but on a gentleman called Jake, um, who is a Native American. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's another iteration of Werewolf by Night, uh, but as some of you loonies know, there has been speculation as to Werewolf or Werewolf by Night appearing in the Disney Plus Moon Knight TV show. So, so could this be a little you know precursor by Marvel um, to you know what is to come that Werewolf by Night will be. In the TV show, I'll be very excited if it does. But um, I'm looking forward to this series. Uh, maybe, who knows? Maybe Moon Knight might appear 
in it as well but it's still a while off so in April um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see that's werewolf by night okay loonies I think before you know without any you know further delays I think we should really get into it and I want to really cover this um, this was a a different issue to the previous ones of Conan Serpent War so we're gonna do our um, our Lunapic new comic book review it is Conan Serpent War issue 4 it was released the 22nd of January 2020 written by Jim Zub art by I think it's Ig or IG Guara uh, and as well as Vanessa Del Rey colorist Frank Darmada letters VC Travis uh, VC's Travis Lanham and editor Mark Basso so for those that want a roundabout synopsis of the event, uh, this is our bare bones, and it goes thus. It's revealed that Niord, one of James Allison's incarnations, waged battle with the Worm, an extra-dimensional entity born to wreak havoc on humanity and our world. Conchu and Set form an alliance, and after pulling Moon Knight and Conan, Onto his plane, Konshu instructs the two that with Set's help, they are to seek out and destroy the worm. Konshu seemingly controls Set too, keeping the god of chaos on a leash until their victory is secured. Satine, who only moments ago battled Conan, is obliged to aid Conan's mortal wound um, under the instruction of Set. She reverses the poison which she inflicted on the barbarian and pledges to aid them in destroying their common enemy. Moon Knight, Conan, Dark Agnes, Solomon Kane, and Satine, the Zealot of Set, band together to attack the worm in our reality, whilst Konshu battles to contain the worm on his plane of existence. The worm is defeated, and Conan is left with the dying Satine to ponder both of their faiths. Dark Agnes, Solomon Kane, and Moon Knight are all returned to their own time, and each resume their lives and their heroism. Konshu frees Set from his hold and the two gods discuss their role in the universe. Konshu for balance and Set for betrayal. Mark Spector, upon returning to Earth and present day, also appears to still have Konshu's presence lingering. Spectre is imbued with power from the god of the moon and he vexes whether this will change the course of his life. Elsewhere, the worm lives on and is seen in the form of a crown which is presented to Cull the Conqueror from Jameis of Lemuria as a gift and a promise, a promise of an alliance, which does not bode well for events to come. So yeah, that was uh, that was a bare bone synopsis of issue four for Conan Serpent War. Um, straight off the bat. I'm going to be honest with you, loonies. I actually enjoyed this issue um, far more than I enjoyed any of the others. Um, I think uh, issue two was pretty good for me. Issue one was a bit kind of middle of the road. Issue three was disappointing, um, which really didn't give me much hope for issue four. But after reading issue four, I was quite pleased. Um, I can't say it, it stuck the landing, but it did leave me satisfied um, because one of the first things about this is that it really is just a springboard into something else uh, it even ends with the beginning so this is this this whole series is a setup for something else and it very much felt like that for most uh, most of the time whilst reading it but uh, issue four anyway it had enough of a closing element to it um, and it actually dropped a few tidbits there that kind of really got me excited and I'm sure it, it must have gotten a lot of loonies excited as well. So anyway, for listeners that aren't, you know, uh, aware or uh, of the, the format that we do, uh, what you heard was obviously the bare bones, the synopsis. I'll go through some aspects which range from the writing, art, themes, characterizations and any references. Uh, and I'll go through each of them uh, with some some dot points, and I'll finish off with a a moon rating. Uh, I'm I might stick to 
a Konishu rating this time. We have two systems, the vanilla rating or the Konishu rating system, kindly donated by um, a fellow high priest, Konishu. So anyway, getting into it, my first impressions, obviously, as I said, um, I was quite surprised, um, pleasantly surprised with this. Um, if we go into writing, I thought the I thought the writing had a good pace to it. Uh, there were definitely a lot of set pieces in there, and they they seem to flow well enough together. I mean, um, if we go through it at the beginning, again, beautiful art by Vanessa Del Rey. Uh, you can't fault her work, and unsung hero should be sung. You know, should be should release an album. That's how well sung he should be. Uh, Frank D'Armada on colours. Um, the colours are absolutely brilliant. Uh, they no longer just shone on the covers um, inside too. Uh, I'll get to it, but the colours really did lift the art here. Anyway, uh, so writing a good pace. There are a lot of set pieces, as I said. Again, we start off with James Allison. Uh, we get a bit more of an explanation now of Njord and his relationship with the worm. We get a bit more information on the worm itself, who we've suspected to be evil, and it obviously is. Um, and then that leads uh, kind of straight into the Eternal Egypt, which is that other plane of existence with Khonshu. That flows on. They build on... Um, the, I guess, the description and the character of the worm there. Uh, again, a bit more exposition revealed that uh, the worm and, and Set are uh, constantly at war, how it's no longer just Konshu versus Set, they actually have a common enemy. So the writing kind of flows, and it flows into these different scenes, which I thought was um, was really good, and it, it kind of kept the pace and the interest up. It kept the levels up for me. Um, some... Uh, some really good, I, I think some really good writing here for Konshu, um, the god. Um, so he, he describes, and you know, in this exposition, uh, this conflict is not between brothers in Egypt or warriors in even more ancient Stygia, Stygia. It never has been. Uh, the snake and moon have fought many times, but now we have a far greater foe. What little power remains of the great serpent will be used to mount our defense. And um, really, really cool here, showing of Conchu's, Conchu's power. Um, it's an alliance between the snake and the moon, but uh, there's no bones about it. Uh, Conchu is the, the dominant of the, um, the allies. Uh, he kind of quelches set into the palm of his hands and kind of keeps him under wraps. Um, but they are both working towards a common enemy. Um, so then, then it obviously, then it kind of explains because I think Rebecca and I we were questioning in the previous issue how come Conan found himself in this other reality? Where is it? What is it? What's going on? It explains it straight away. He he pretty much died for a bit, I guess, when he was mortally wounded by Satine um, with the poison, uh, but set kind of brings him back and set with the aid of Satine heals him and takes away all the poison that was inflicted upon Conan so I guess by Conan dying that's how he ended up into uh, Eternal Egypt uh, and Mark or Moon Knight obviously with his <clears throat> with his um, service to Conchu uh, Conchu can just like draw him in I'm kind of liking how Conchu now is I mean, it's a bit twofold. I I loved the Conchu interpretation previously with the bird skull and and this ambiguity as to whether Conchu is is real or not, or um, it's just Mark's figments. Um, I, I'm liking I'm liking this classic take on Conchu now. He's he's actually a bit of a badass. <laughs> he's quite powerful, and and I think it's um, long overdue for character of Conchu as well. We we really must see how awesome he is. Uh, we got a glimpse of it all the way back in the West Coast Avengers with, uh, with Moon Knight there in um, Lost in Space slash Time, which is one of the famous arcs, uh, which we've covered on the show as well. Uh, but it's good to see again that Konshu is a big hitter. You, you know, it kind of makes you think on how, how powerful this guy is. Like, how do you rate him again, or how do you rate Konshu against, say, um, Odin? or, you know, Zeus, uh, if he can actually have set under under his thumb, um, that's a, a pretty big statement. So anyway, uh, going back to it, um, so 
uh, Satine, then obviously Set has agreed to this alliance, and then so we get that set piece where Satine heals Conan, uh, and she she says yes, let's um let's band together. Um, Solomon Kane. Uh, look, in characterizations, I feel Dark Agnes and Solomon Kane are the, the least developed out of this this whole little romp. Um, the poor fella, he he's still pointing guns at Moon Knight, has no idea what the hell is happening. Uh, so Moon Knight has to kind of lead him towards, you know, the worm and what they have to do. Um, so a bit of a shame because I'm I really do find Solomon Kane an interesting character. Later on in this issue, we see little teasers for Dark Agnes and Solomon Kane, which kind of did pique my interest, so that's good. But I think overall, um, he, he wasn't developed all that well. Anyway, so they all they all kind of bound bound there. They all band together. There's a look, I'm not gonna go through this whole story page by page, but they um they all band together, they fight the worm, they beat the worm. Um and another interesting point which I put here for the writing, which hats off to Jim Zub uh, I love how Moon Knight is the slayer of the worm. So he's pretty much up there with what Niord did previously. Um, and and this is what really got me interesting. So interested. So Conchu says in an apparition, he says, uh, Mark, take now a piece of the moon that is and every moon that shall ever be. Use it, strike the beast. So he's asked Mark to tap into something or to retrieve something, or Conchu's given him something that will imbue him with some sort of power to defeat the worm. And as we've seen, the worm is quite a powerful entity. It's on the level of, of set, you know. So Mark is given this power to uh, to actually defeat this the, the worm. Uh, it's not defined as to what the power is, but we see later on... Um, and one of the other points I have for writing, Mark gets an upgrade. One of the most exciting things for me was towards the end, when when Mark wakes up and he says, Conchu, what have you done? What have you done to me? It looks like that he has this power that he can tap into. Um, he has this power to harness a piece of the moon. I'm going to just say that is in every moon that shall ever be. Very ambiguous, but it sounds awesome. <laughs> so... And it, it Mark's eyes glow, and I think he also mentions what does he? He can see, kind of like the the sixth sense. He he can kind of see dead people. Is that it? I see things, ghostly images everywhere. So we don't know the nature of this power, but I don't know. I got really excited by it. I think it's pretty cool. I'm all for Moon Knight having some sort of ambiguous power. I mean, he's had the power of crazy in the Beamer's Run. Now he's got this thing. I hope they flesh it out. Um, very exciting stuff. Um, other other points to the writing I found quite enjoyable. I'm just jumping now. Um, so after the big fight, after the big fight, everyone gets, as mentioned in the synopsis, gets um, thrown back into their own reality and time. Uh, another bit I thought of really good writing here was a little bit of a discussion here between, it was quite tragic, I thought. It was between Conan and the dying Satine. So obviously her mortal form can no longer um, survive after it had inhabited, like, the god set. I mean, she says, what is it? Um, my, mortal f my mortal flesh could not contain the godhood it was given. So after the massive battle, after Moon Knight defeats the worm, and they all, you know, had their bit fighting the worm, uh, she comes out pretty much worse for wear. She looks terrible. Um, it's quite sad, really, because she, she followed set, but... Um, I oh, know that was her. That was her belief. You know, she believed what she was doing was right, and she had total faith in Set. And there's a good bit of banter here between her and Conan. And Conan actually describes. I've had discussions with Dave from Signal of Doom, who's a big Conan fan, and he was on the show before. He mentioned how Conan doesn't really care much about Crom, and uh, it's pretty much summed up here. Um, and Conan says, "Crom sits upon his mountain, waiting to test his people once they die." Before that, he ignores us. It's better that way. Um, so Conan obviously does not lean at all on his god, Crom. Um, he has a belief, as uh, this accurately said by Dave, has a belief, but you know he couldn't care less about Crom. Crom doesn't care less about 
you know, his followers at all. So there doesn't seem to be any interaction at all. But I thought this was a good contrast between his beliefs uh, and Satine's, who, um, who even to her dying breath, um, she totally worships the Great Serpent set. Uh, and Conan's just kind of like, he's like rolling his eyes. Um, not phased at all. There's no emotion to Conan that she's dying. To him, it's just like another battle, and this is how it is. Um, so he doesn't show any kind of emotion towards, you know, her dying. Um, and he says, oh, look at you, a deluded zealot serving an evil snake, and now you serve empty air. Now, I think the voicing for Conan that... It, uh, I'm not a big Conan fan, but I think that is spot on Conan. Um, kind of cold, but... He's very, um, I guess, realistic uh, in what he does, and um, and it's just about survival, and um, yeah, he shows no empathy towards her, uh, but that's him. He's been hardened. So I really do, um, I really did enjoy this. Uh, this was oh, two pages, or so two or three pages. There's there's one page that had little dialogue when we see Conan out of the rubble. But a good three-page set piece here between Conan and Satine. So one of the highlights for me of writing was that little scene. Uh, as mentioned, another um, part of another point for the writing was Mark getting an upgrade, as I mentioned. Uh, and finally, the last bit of writing, which I thought was pretty, um, pretty, I don't know, tantalising, uh, was the epilogue, and that was for things to come. Now, I actually. You know, I had a woo moment um, when I saw the the crown, because um, any longtime Marvel comic book reader would know of the serpent crown, and uh, some of you would know that there is a Conan serpent crown series coming out soon. But what we see here, presented to Cull the Conqueror, another Robert E. Howard creation, is the Worm Crown. It seems to be. A crown made of the remnants of the worm. Uh, now, if it's anything to go by, you know, the serpent crown, then this worm crown is bad news. Um, so it just kind of springboards into things to come. I'm wondering, because what Rebecca and I had discussed in our last uh, previous discussion on the serpent war was um, the speculation about a Conchu massive event in Marvel. I'm wondering, and, and seeing his awesome power here, I'm wondering if this is the road that we're going towards with the Serpent Crown, with the Worm Crown. I mean, both are associated with Conchu. Will we see Conchu now step up even further and take on, or, you know, take centre stage in the Marvel Universe? Um, for me, it's looking good, actually. Uh, and um, so I, I'm quite invested in the follow-up issues um, connected to this, the Serpent War. This seems to be just chapter one of a bigger, a much bigger event. Um, so I've got a slightly different perspective now on it. Um, still, like, still disappointed with issues one and 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 two and three, like, you know, is, is disappointed with it as a whole as a four-parter, but. In hindsight, look, I wonder once it's kind of all done and dusted, and this is four issues of a, I don't know, a 16 arc, a 16 issue arc of, you know, the Serpent Crown, I think, is four parts, and there might be another little mini event which is connected to this. There's a Dark Agnes book coming out, which is a mini. I'm wondering if all this collected makes one glorious tapestry. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, that, that is writing um, for the most part. Now, if we go into art, uh, there's a fair few things to say about this. I think, generally, again, I think the art is is quite uneven, um, and this is not particularly a good thing, but it is consistent with the previous art um, of issues one to three. Now, I think, I mean, they've had a, a few different artists in here, but they seem to have the same kind of style. Um, so, the, my first impression was the first couple of pages, I see, you see um, Conan, and he's kind of hokily drawn, I think, I wasn't too impressed with it, um, 
And again, there seems to be lacking something, though it is a slight improvement. Like There's a lot more attention to detail to the backgrounds to a lot more panels. So it's starting to flesh out. Um, but there's just still something behind, behind the art which seems a little lacking. One of the good things though about this is, oh my god, there were some beautiful spreads in this that totally just took me away. Um, I could be a little unkind and say, I, the artist must have just spent a lot of time on these these spreads because they just like, it's like, whoa. I mean, the first one would have to be, there's a huge double page spread of when you first see the team um, looking on to the huge worm, which is this ghastly, grotesque, creation of multiple eyes and multiple mouths sharp teeth and there's a blazing blue moon in the background uh the colors again huge huge credit to frank domato but this page is just brilliant um i love it uh so anyway that really that really spun me but it, it's it's kind of juxtaposed with some pretty average art as well which is a shame um if I was to say that the whole book or the whole series were to, done, to be done at this level of this spread, uh, it would be a, a amazing, an amazing comic book. Anyway, um, for the most part, th there's actually a spread after that with the band of um, Moon Knight, Solomon Kane, Dark Agnes, Conan, and Satine, uh, which is pretty decent. I mean, Guara does, does pretty good like figures. Um, which is pretty good. So his worm is actually a bit of a highlight. Even when they do fight it, you see these grotesque eyes and tentacles and like lamprey kind of suckers. Um, really cool, uh, really cool um, realisation of what the worm looks like. Um, I want to also call out as well another great visual. What really impressed me was... Um, we first see it in, in Eternal Egypt, and Conchu's saying that he's going to try and fight on his end um, the um, the hold of the worm, or the worm trying to you know take over the reality um, and destroy stuff. And I love the moon with it looks like um, I don't know what you call them tapeworms or you know long worms kind of draped around the moon, uh, all in silhouette. So um, kind of looks like a I don't know. Um, you know, uh, wool threads or something, but but the fact that you you associate it with a worm makes you think of uh, yeah. All I can think of is like tapeworm or round. Well, those really long worms that you get in your gut, you know, when you crook. Um, and so I love that image, and you see it, and in that beautiful spread that I was talking about, you see that the the moon as well, kind of um, infected with these worm, um, these worms just kind of. Um, slowly strangling it. Um, so yeah, really good visual there. Uh, so I really did like that. Um, also, as well, another point uh, during this battle, uh, the first time I think I've seen it. It's I thought it was a really good effect um, with layouts. There was a twelve panel layout, twelve vertical panel layout done on a page here, and uh, this what I. Th this is what I thought um, the colorist did really well. The art was good. Um, the layout was great. There's not much dialogue here, but uh, it is pretty cool. Um, so you have a, you have Conan, Dark Agnes, Solomon Kane. You have Moon Knight, Satine. You have all them in their own thin vertical panels, but then you get them again fighting. Then you get them um, with their faces kind of overlaid with the cosmos. Really, um, I think really, really visually good stuff. Um, and, you know, the writing's quite cool, it's a little lyrical, uh, words can hardly convey this battle waged with Blade, talking about Conan, and Blood, Dark Agnes, Faith, Solomon Kane, and Fervor, Moon Knight, a struggle in the desert set among the stars, a battle of mortals to decide the fate of gods, every blade forged in fire, every warrior burning bright, um, you know, little words, economy of words, but, um, but I think pretty cool, pretty um, uh, creates an imagery, and and coupled with that twelve panel is is pretty um, pretty impressive, I think. So, uh, so that twelve panel, uh, and finally my final point is the colours, which I, I keep on mentioning. Uh, on the covers, the the colours are just 
awesome. They're really good to look at. And they're now kind of on the insides of the pages, which I didn't really notice that much from issues one to three. But now with Eternal Egypt and the Cosmos um, and the Worm now in full play, uh, I think Frank D'Amato really had a bit of fun here. So he injects all these funky colors. Like you get these nice deep purples. You get these greens, like vibrant greens and some blues, all to do with the, the cosmos. So uh, a lot of fun stuff. So that was art, I think. Um, so pretty, for the most part, pretty uneven. But as you can as you can hear, um, holistically, I guess I was I guess I was impressed by it. Um, uh, oh yeah, just the other the other good spreads. Again, there's another great spread of the worm. It says Moon Knight um, plunges a bit of the moon that ever shall be, whatever you call it. Um, he plunges it, which kind of looks like a, a moon blade into the worm. Uh, at the same time, there's an astral form of Njord, um, you know, um, shooting an arrow through the worm. And then underneath it, you get, <clears throat> sorry, you get four panels, one of each player, Conan, Dark Agnes, Solomon Kane, Moon Knight, kind of all cosmically um, entangled. And there are these are the colors I'm talking about, these bright greens popping, these blues and purples, um, really really nice stuff to look at so uh, that was another great spread and the, the last one I'd, I'd say that I was really impressed with <coughs> it's not really a spread but there's a um, towards the end there's a little um, panel titled Beyond Time and it's got Konshu just kind of meditating he's like cross-legged uh, he just looks pretty cool and then he, he kind of takes Set which ends up being his little snake um, from within the palm of his hand and it puts him down they have a little conversation about um, Conchu basically saying how set is necessary in the universe um, you know he has to play he has a role to play which is basically evil and to betray and to cause havoc um, but Conchu uh, is more um, well he doesn't mention his but his is I guess to to bring a balance or to counter sets actions so that was a, it's a really nice art as well. And actually, having said that, there's a, there's a pretty cool uh, shot of Moon Knight when we see him talking to Konshu about what have you done to me. Uh, then he puts on his costume and then he just flies off the balcony. Uh, reminiscent of, <clears throat> I think, some of the recent runs. I'm not sure if it's a direct relationship to that, but um, that's pretty fun as well. Okay, so we're going on to themes here, one second. Okay, not too much here. I just put down faith. Um, so we saw that a couple of set pieces, a couple of scenes here. Uh, as I mentioned before, Conan and Satine, uh, there was a discussion of their faith. You saw a contrast between Conan's faith as opposed to Satine's, uh, not blind, but just very loyal faith. Uh, you also have that conversation just mentioned of uh, Konshu and Set, talking about their roles. Uh, not so much fate, but, uh, faith, but um, I guess they are part and parcel of people who like, worship them. I mean, they are the gods, so they are part of faith. Uh, but I thought, as mentioned as well, I thought Dark Agnes and Solomon Cain... Um, struggled here uh, to be fleshed out. <clears throat> I thought there was a, a like a field day for Solomon Kane. You could have done so much, and there was all this talk about him playing off Moon Knight because of their contrasting faiths, but uh, it didn't really come out. Um, but having said that, Conan and Moon Knight, I think they got good coverage here with their faith. Co faith. Conan again with his discussion with Satine, but Moon Knight with his. Um, acting as the fist of Conchu and serving Conchu quite well. Uh, so I think the the MVPs for this issue certainly are Moon Knight and Conchu <clears throat> and Conan in close, uh, close second, I'd say. And finally, I think characterizations. Okay, <clears throat> so number one, I put here Conchu. Uh, and I mentioned before, just his awesome display of power, um, his hold over set. His controlling of Mark, uh, but not only that, his, I guess you'd call it his reward of his um, giving Mark some power at the end, which again, I must emphasize, has got me so 
damn excited. I can't wait to see where Moonlight goes from here. Um, so Concha was done well. He got so much screen time here, um, and it was none of it was wasted. I think he, he popped in when he when he should have, like when he told Moonlight to to take a bit of the moon. He popped in towards the end, talking with Set. So every time he appeared, he gave the reader something, and I thought that was really um, really impressive. And and, and I, I love to see more of Conchu. <coughs> I think he was. Um, I think he was underutilized. Uh, he could have done more, really, in the Bemis run. Although he did, he did have his time to shine with the other personalities, with the other identities. But um, over here, he's definitely taking uh, some sort of center stage. Conan, as well, I think was done well. As mentioned, <clears throat> uh, his dialogue, the way he was acting, the way he acted towards the teen, uh, his his barbaric nature, just um, attacking Moon Knight at the beginning, um, all very Conan, um, but I really did love his scene with Satine, and, and it just gave an insight to his faith, um, and I think gave him a little bit more depth, you know, rather than just a barbarian just hacking and slashing, um, you know, so even Satine was mentioning, oh, you know, but but Set helped you, he healed you, um, you should be thankful to Set, and Conan said, no, no, he's been giving me nightmares, you know, you know, so uh, there's a lot of there's a lot there to unpack for Conan, uh, you know, with his mindset. <clears throat> uh, he's very stalwart, but uh, I think he was done well enough here. Uh, as mentioned, Solomon Kane, Agnes, my other point, unfortunately not well developed. Uh, and I thought characterization of Moon Knight, uh, he was done quite well. Exciting to see where it takes him. Oh, actually, I want to go back to Solomon Kane and Agnes. They have their little bits towards the end. Um, Agnes talking with uh, one of her allies, I think, um, and and we know that there's a series um, for her. While I was reading that, I was quite interested. I I was conscious of the fact that oh, I I might actually pick up this Dark Agnes series. Um, there wasn't much shown about her, but I'm still quite interested to see what they can do with her character. So I'm not sure if that is just me or it comes across for everyone else, but she was pretty much quiet for most of the time, um, but she gets a little bit at the end. Similar with Solomon Kane, it seems that they are setting him up for something else. Uh, looks like he's going to be fighting undead zombies or something. Um, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see more Solomon Kane. I actually saw on one of the um, streaming services there was a Solomon Kane movie, so I might I might give that a go. Um, but yeah, large part they were not well developed. But yeah, Moon Knight, I think he was represented well. Uh, his dialogue was was fine, not that um, you know, not that exciting. Exciting, not here nor there. Uh, as I mentioned, the most exciting thing was <clears throat> this apparent upgrade, which I'm very eager to see will unfold. Uh, finally, yeah, uh, references to other runs, not really. I guess just the the Valley of the Worm again, uh, which one of our loonies. Um, Jordan Hegarty mentioned, uh, shout out to Jordan, that um, that you can buy that as a, I think it was one of the True Believers um, issues that were released uh, not that long ago, just before the, the start of Serpent War. It came out as Serpent War Zero. So again, it might reference that. Um, but uh, also, I mean, references, I guess, uh, Cull the Conqueror is a pretty big character in Robert E. Howard, so he, he's referenced at the end there, um, so another introduction to another character, um, obviously references a creation, another creation by Robert E. Howard, but other than that, uh, yeah, not too much, I'm not too, yeah, it's not really heavy with references that I know of, if there are, please let me know, <laughs> um, uh, but I don't, I didn't pick him up. Anyway, so I guess we'll come to our moon rating for this, and uh, I'm not sure about you, we'll get to some listener feedback a little later, but uh, I gave this a solid, I'll go for Connish's rating, I gave this a solid round boy, and I'm pretty strict with my marking system now, So, but that's a, that's a seven, so um, it was, to me it kind of, um, it kind of made the four parts, I mean for, for much of a, a pretty mediocre run um i think everything kind of lifted towards the end uh, and again again i have to say about the moon Knight upgrade uh that's what got me really excited so so uh, 
yeah, really excited to see it. So seven, I think, just a, above, you know, above average. Um, it's actually prompted me to, you know, perhaps pick up the trade. I think I will pick up the trade. Um, I've actually stopped on on getting the the weekly pulls, like the the floppies, which is a shame, just for um, you know financial reasons. But I'm thinking I might just complete it because I think I've got one, one, two, and three. No, one and two, one, two, and three, maybe. I don't know. Um, so I think I would go back and complete it. Um, but definitely, I think I'd get the trade um, as opposed to say Contagion, which had Moon Knight in it. Oh, look, I might get might get that down the track, but it's not up on my list. Uh, this would be, yeah, I wouldn't mind picking that, this up sooner rather than later. So um, I'd give it a 7, 7 out of 10. So there you go, uh, loonies. That is the review, I hope. Uh, let me know. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, we'll... We'll have some. I've got some feedback actually. Having said that, so I guess I'll hear very soon. Um, but what we'll do? Why don't we? Um, I'm just going to go to a short break. Listen to a couple of other awesome podcast promos, and uh, when we come back, we'll look at our Mooney missives. So catch you soon. You belong. You belong. You belong. You belong to the Merry Marvel. Anyone hear us? This is Trey Lawson. And I'm James Hickson. Anyone can hear this broadcast. We need your help. We've been kidnapped and imprisoned in a tomb by this creepy old undertaker named Mr. Gravely. And he's forcing us to review his collection of Marvel horror comics. Stuff like Tomb of Dracula. Werewolf by Night. Man-Thing. Ghost Rider. And so much more. Forcing us to record these reviews as a podcast called the Tomb of Ideas. If you can hear this, please contact our families. Call the authorities. Anyone. Tell them we can be found at... Now, now, boys. Let's not give too much away. You can find James and Trey every other Wednesday at the Tomb of Ideas, a Marvel horror podcast. A proud member of the Cinepunks podcast group. See you there, Tomb Believers. <laughs> the Merry Marvel Park is the party. The Swamp, more than merely a place. It is a churning, seething, bubbling bed of life, of which you are a part. Once you were a man, a chemist named Ted Salas, until one little experiment went somewhat awry, and you changed. The serum that was to have made you a super soldier, combined with the strange forces in the swamp, to make you over into this, a shambling, mindless mockery of your former humanity. The macabre man-thing. Man-Thing was created in the early 1970s to capitalize on the growing monster craze, but under writer Steve Gerber it became something quite different. Experimental, surreal, and very, very weird. It was something I loved as a kid, but does it still hold up today, four decades after its initial publication? So join me, Paul Matthew Carr, as I attempt to make sense of this cult classic and analyze each issue, putting it in the context of the time it was written and comparing it to the standards of today. And maybe you too can come to love the world's second most famous swamp-based comic book character as much as I do. The Nexus of All Realities, a Man-Thing podcast, a twice-monthly dive into the bizarre. Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, episode 130, and you are with your High Priest of Conchu, Ray. Kind of feeling like Christian Slater. Is it from that 80s or 90s movie where he was a radio DJ? I don't know why, but there you go. Anyway, loonies, we are back, and you heard on the other side of that ad, or those ads, you heard... Uh, the review, my review, on Conan Serpent War Issue 4. Um, yeah, and so now it is time to listen to some uh, 
Mooney missives. I've got here on my prompt sheet. Spectacles. I'm going to have to get my title sorted. Anyway, um, so we've got some feedback, uh, some of from this issue. Um, so I put up a spoiler discussion uh, thread on Facebook, in our page, on our group, and on Twitter as well. I think I, I think I may have done it for, for Instagram. I can't remember. It's been a busy week, loonies. I apologise if I haven't. Anyway, we got some feedback on our Facebook group. So the first one I'd like to shout out, um, Jordan Hegarty. And he had two comments. First one's about the cover. He says, I love Moon Knight on this cover. This is for issue four, the issue that we just reviewed. Using the crescent darts on the serpents look killer. Yeah, we are, I haven't really talked much about the covers to these, but really, credit where credit's due, the covers are quite impressive. Um, sometimes they overshadowed the contents within, <laughs> uh, but this time not. Uh, the cover was pretty was pretty solid too. And again, Frank Domato, if he's the guy that did the colors on the cover, uh, give the guy a raise, give him a bonus, Marvel. He's, he's doing really well. Anyway, Gordon continues about the issue itself and he says this issue was my favorite and I'm thoroughly satisfied with this series pairing loved crafty and tones from the world of Moon Knight with the sword and sorcery fantasy characters of Robert E Howard was a genius move and I believe they executed this well a few basic concept uh, aspects sorry here so he's got some points here Moon Knight and Khonshu had some juicy action scenes as well as great dialogue. Totally agree with you, Jordan. I, as I mentioned, I thoroughly enjoyed them. Uh, strange alchemy. The unique beliefs, backgrounds of each character facilitated great dialogue and plot twists. Um, and the standout for me was, was Conan and, and Satine for that. Um, art was a pleasure and I liked the creative use of panels. Yes. Uh, now, I didn't mention any other ones. Look, the one that just struck out for me was that 12 panel layout which is just phenomenal i'd never seen that before um but yeah i mean uh, i guess i'll have to reread it and look at it the layouts and and the panels and i'm sure there are quite innov innovative uses of it uh solid epic ending and cliffhangers totally agree and number five of jordan's aspects moon knight gets the climax absolutely that climax is really kind of set things off i, I really want to um i'm probably going to put up a post it's hard to get a discussion happening, um, or maybe just within the spoiler thread about this thing with Moon Knight and his powers. It's bloody awesome. I cannot wait. Anyway, have I mentioned that enough? I <laughs> probably, probably have, but uh, that's how much of an impression it's, it's left on me. Uh, there's another bit of feedback here from Chad Jernigan. Hmm. Uh, I don't know who this fella is. Um, is he a first time loony? I'm not too sure. No, he's not. He's uh, he's one of our most loyal members. That's that was a joke. Anyway, anyway, Chad goes to write. This was a pretty good ending on all accounts. Keeping in mind that this is a Conan story featuring Mooney, I think it was a great rendition of him. The story had a lot of hoops to jump through to close the deal, and it accomplished that, but also left a giant question lingering by the end. Sure. Everyone is returned to their time and space while the worm is ended, but now Mark seems endowed with demigod power sets, able to see the Heliopolis-style overlay once again, an ability we haven't seen in several years. The action was pretty keen, and the engorged nightmare worm is damn scary. Um, Chad, there's nothing better. There's no better adjective than engorged. I love it. Anyway... Um, it's a good issue as it delivered a decent but quizzical finale, frothing with possibilities. I'd say this is a hard seven. Hey, exactly the same as me. As there is a lot of time used to tie up loose ends and lots of baddies to make into worms meat. But where does Mark go from here? So yeah, Chad seems to um, rate seven as a as a bit of a lesser mark. Look, I, I think it's a it's a pretty decent mark. I think it's good. Like in my books, a seven is a is pretty good, you, you know. Uh, you don't reach the eights and the nines unless you're in, you know, Ellis Lemire territory. Um, but uh, no, no, thank you, Chad. Uh, fantastic. I admittedly read your comment before I read the the comic. Um, I'm glad I kind of forgot or kind of glossed over the, the fact that you said Mark has demigod power sets because um, that still surprised me when I read it. Uh, read the comic, so I really enjoyed it, um, but gl glad to hear that you liked it too. 
And uh, another, just a final uh, comment here, just on this issue. I've got a couple of other comments from other episodes and issues uh, from a fellow high priest, Rebecca. Now, this is a little different. So Rebecca says, bad, bad writing. You want bantering Mark, have bantering Mark. Oh, but hey, it's okay because there's a new status quo, which may have been the point of including Mark, and which is fine, but oh my God, what a way to get there. I feel all my criticisms of first three issues are here in abundance, and this is such a self-indulgent book. It was the definition of fine, but so overwrought. Uh, thanks, Rebecca, for that. It would have been really... Uh, I know scheduling issues, um, and, and, you know, um, it, it happens, you know, with life and stuff, but it would have been so cool. Uh, oh, you're probably enjoying um, London as well. But it, it would have been so cool to have discussed this with you um, for this episode because it seems that we have such polarizing views on this. I um, It's not like I'm gushing that I absolutely loved it. I gave it a seven, but I guess it comes from partly... Um, being thankful that it ended kind of half decent uh, but again also this kind of as, as Chad puts it an endowment of demigod power sets <laughs> again I've got to make mention uh, that's mentioned number 103 so yeah no um, thank you for those comments and of course uh, I'd like to reiterate everyone's taste is their own there's no right or wrong um, you know you can't say to someone your taste is wrong because it's their taste. Um, so uh, I'm glad to see that we got some differing views there. Uh, I just want to also mention, so got some other uh, comments. I want to give them a shout out. Uh, this one is from Instagram and it was on issue three. So this was on the issue that Rebecca and I chatted about. Um, first three issues, and this, sorry, this is from Make Mine Moon Knight, his uh, handle, his or hers handle. And they say, first three issues are boring. Each issue uh, so far has felt like I was reading the same exact issue. Nothing's really happening. It's all mostly from the perspective of the narrator James Allison and the worm. I was expecting something more epic. Issues one and two could have been combined to one issue. By issue three, all four characters should have met up. A misunderstanding should have led to a two-on-two fight between them. The storytelling is somehow both brisk and drags. Feels like a prologue series for an actual series. I totally agree with you there. Um, considering it's only four issues. Each one should have been double-sized for more content. Uh, none of the four heroes have had any real spotlight focus on them. Poorly executed series. You'd think they'd find a way to tie this series to the Moon Knight Annual that came out a few months ago. I, th I think with... Um, the way that Conchie is being portrayed, there, there's like a tangential, really um, faint connection there. But I think there is a connection there with that annual. Um, considering they both involve time displacement elements, okay, and an and, and actual Conchu. Okay, so fair enough. Yeah, the time displacement with Kang. Um, but Kang and, you know, and then you've got the Worm. I think they're totally different, uh, different enemies, different, different um antagonists anyway but i guess that would require too much thinking for the so-called editors marvel currently has uh thank you mate my marvel um looney is very not happy very much not happy with uh with the series um i'm hoping issue four kind of helped you um or entertained you a little bit more but um no i mean i agree i i share your frustrations with it um but yeah after reading issue four it really just did confirm that this was a, a precursor to an actual another series, uh, which is you know a little sad. Um, but in years to come, when you read issues one to four holistically, and the, the subsequent issues that will tie to it, um, I think it might make a uh, a pretty decent read. Anyway, um, also uh, sorry, Mate Mine Marvel continues to say I'd love for Benjamin Percy to helm a new series as a writer. He did a perfect job with the Marvel Comics Presents Issue 4 single story featuring Moon Knight. Uh, he understands what makes a good Moon Knight story menace and mystery, as he put it in an interview for that story. Uh, totally agree. <coughs> um, having reread that Marvel Comics Presents uh, and Benjamin Percy's stuff, uh, yeah, for sure. He, he got the tone, I think he got the tone of um, the Ellis Barn Wood Run. So if, if that's what you're aiming for, I mean, that's what you like. 
then for sure, like Benjamin Percy can deliver on that front as well. It seems like they're they're edging Moon Knight towards something else. Um, he seems to me more of the just with his kind of laid back, looser dialogue, uh, more of the classic Moon Knight, more of the the earlier Mensch, potentially Mark Spector Moon Knight run from the nineties. Um, so he's not that dark driven kind of you know Houston or or Ellis run, uh, but he certainly harks back to a more classic Moon Knight. Uh, but totally agree, Benjamin Percy would be pretty cool. And finally, uh, a another shout out here to CMK7. Beep, 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 beep. He's a, uh, a Moon Knight uh, a loony fan from the YouTube corner of, uh, of our podcast. And he chats about our last issue, uh, I'm sorry, our last episode which we did Avatars of Vengeance, which was a, a gaming episode with guest star Joey Agliata. Um, he says, great show, great guest. I was always curious about Ultimate Alliance, but sadly I had lost touch with platform games before this had came, come out. So many new Moonies got their first exposure to Moon Knight through this game, Ultimate Alliance. One of the one of the ones, of course, one of the big ones in our community, at least, was Tommy the Man on the Streets. Um, it just goes to show how important IP placement is, whether it be TV, video games, or action figures, etc., when it comes to a character's popularity. I did play Moon Knight in the Marvel Heroes by Gazillion. Uh, then he's got something MMOARPG. I don't think gamers would know what that is. On the PC, too bad it got cancelled. It was a uh, an accurate depiction of Moon Knight, partially thanks to us fans on the forums where the developers used a lot of our suggestions. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, in fact, I see much of the same approaches to Moon Knight's power set in later games uh, that has since come out. Thank you, CMK7. Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. Uh, that was that was great. Yeah, I'm hoping you um, hoping you enjoy this episode when it hits as well. And um, and CMK uh, uh, loonies, I think you'll um, you'll be hearing from that gentleman shortly as well. Um, trying to be cryptic without giving anything away. Anyway, um, so thank you all loonies for uh, providing feedback. It, it's fantastic. We really, really do love to hear from you. We love interacting on our social platforms. Please get in there. Like um, We still get members coming in. Get in there. Show us your, your collection. Uh, let us know what you think of issues. What's your favorite issue? Show us your fan art. All that sort of stuff. We love it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's... Yeah. I mean that's all I've got to say. It's really great. Um, share your fanfic. That would be that would be pretty cool as well. Or actually, Looney as well. Um, having uh, this probably just come to my head. Um, our ITK serial. So you're probably wondering. This is January. We're nearly we're nearly at the end of this month. Um, Looney's. If you want to be part of the serial, um, just hit us up. Uh, also as well. Um, having said that. It's part of the uh, incentives of some of the tiers. So, uh, so maybe have a look again. Have a look at the Patreon page. And uh, if you do become a patron member, you would have the ability to to be part of the serial <laughs> as well. I think I did a, a little bit of a save there. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, was my chain of thought is gone. Uh, yeah, so um, that, that's... That's good. Anyway, I think I'll uh, I think I'll end it there. Uh, next phase, we have a first quarter. The moon is in the first quarter. Oh, sorry. So what I was saying, that's it. My mind was all all over the place. The serial. So January, our episode eight is due out. Uh, just to let you know, loonies, uh, in the middle of or have started editing it together. I've just received all the vocals from all those involved. It's um, it's pretty cool. I can't wait to put it together to show you another chapter of our serial. It will be part eight. Um, I had hoped to release it this episode, but I'm going to try and release it. I'm going to try and release our episode 131 on Friday, which is January the 31st next week. So hopefully I can get it then. Hopefully I can make my own deadline of and serial episode every month. So, uh, yeah, so look out for that serial next week, episode 8. Uh, just to let you know, it, it's very set-heavy as well. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. 
we see a little bit more of, of set and the big bads, uh, a bit more fleshing out of that. So very exciting stuff. Uh, anyway, so next phase, which will be Friday, <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, is the first quarter. So again, we're doing Conchu's Idols, which will be a review on action figures. Now, this is very tenuous because I have yet to approach my um, my guest co-host, which will be Brian Warshaw. Who uh, joined me last time to review the Mezco 1 to 12 um, Crescent edition of Moon Knight, which I have since purchased? Um, but hoping to look at the Mezco 1 to 12, the White Knight version, which is just the all white Moon Knight. Um, there might be a little bit, little bit differences um, between that and the Crescent edition. Um, but we shall wait and see so hopefully I'll get that on board just check our social platforms to see if that's still kind of you know on course for, for next Friday uh, but definitely I will try well definitely I will release episode 8 of our serial next episode so look out for that uh, in episode 131 and incidentally as well if you are a patron member a certain tier then you will be um, given access to just the serial episode as well um, so moving forward it will be featured on our shows uh, and previously I had um, released it later as a single <clears throat> separate file but I'll be doing that now just for um, for patron members so uh, yeah if you like to like to have a separate file and, and like to stitch all the episodes together please consider being a patron member anyway that's it for me loonies uh, thank you so much for listening uh, final words as we go is that uh, I'm part of the collective there's a whole heap of great podcasts out there um, so just check out for uh, hashtag the collective net on Twitter and you should be kind of filtered with all the the shows that are part of the collective or check out the link in our show notes for uh, the actual list of of um, collective members ranging from the Adelaide rising and inhumans podcast a really good podcast there um also sons of the dragon and immortal iron fist podcasts from uh, my other co-hosts uh, we both actually do another podcast last sons of krypton the superman podcast but uh connor there he does an, an iron fist podcast which is really cool and uh look i'll give a lucky shout out to also again our good mates in a demons a ghostwriter podcast um oh also as well i'll be featured on the next signal of doom episode which will be released um yeah which will be released uh this weekend as well so if you are a signal of doom listener you'll see me on there where i get to talk about serpent war issue four as well again Fun, 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 fun stuff. Maybe I'll talk about how excited I am, excited I am at Moon Knight's powers again. Hmm, let's see. Anyway, <laughs> you can find us typically or drop us a line on email, itkmoonknight at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're on Discord, uh, on Get Vocal as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, on Patreon, on Podchaser as well. And that's probably worth checking out. Um, so find us on there. Uh, all the details are in the show notes. Uh, iTunes ratings, it would be cool if uh, if you can drop us an iTunes rating, hopefully a good one, uh, although we don't mind the bad ones. It'll help us improve our show. Uh, and finally, podcast catches. You can you know hear us everywhere and anywhere. Um, so also, incidentally, loonies, I am doing this uh, these sound, uh, sound bites live, so I, I never know when to add this last disclaimer one in. But um, it's going now, so I'm going to try and say, be good, and may Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. I'll catch you later. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.